Now you listen to me, listen to me real good. I've told you once, I said it a thousand times. You get out of those pagan, satanic, religious, Christian churches. Christians do not follow the commandments of the Bible. Christians do what they want to do. They make up their own laws, their own rules, and their own regulations. Come out of her, my people, and come out from among them. And it's real simple and easy to ascertain who are these people you need to come out from. Easy. Number one, if they keep Sunday, that's an automatic sign that you need to not have any fellowship with these commandment-breaking wicked deceivers and seducers and bewitchers of the truth. Simple. Hallelujah. Bless you, brother DeAndre. Bless you. It's good to be back in the house with our family, giving Yah the glory. Bless the name of Abba Yah. This day, this holy Sabbath, this holy rest day that Yah has made for us. Let us live holy hands. Dear, dear Heavenly Father, we thank you this day, Father, that you have given us, that you have brought us forth and given us another day of breath to praise you, to lift up a holy resound to the Shemayim where your throne is seated, Father. We bless you and thank you for giving us our shepherd, Father, to bring forth this word today. Just anoint these words today. Let it be life to our soul. We just thank you that we are gathered today in sweet fellowship. We just praise you once again, Father, because we have life in our bodies that we are able to bring forth the gift of praise today to bring forth our, our bodies and our minds and our soul father be clothed in our right mind and bless you once again we thank you in the mighty name of jesus let the whole house of Israel say alleluia Am I on? Can you hear me? I can't hear me. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to the king. Uh-oh. Right, hey, y'all may be seated, Israel. Bless y'all. Glory to the king. We good? That's that Star Wars sword. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Never looked at Star Wars, but if I did, I would root for Dark Vader. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. How y'all doing, Israel? They ain't doing too good. <laughs> Have you ever considered rude if you speak to someone, they don't back to sit and look at you? Would that be considered rude? Yes. Yes. That's one of me, and that's about who knows. I ain't gonna say how many of y'all. Wouldn't it be? I mean, I should expect a response, shouldn't I? I mean, that's common courtesy, right? However, I understand. I've traveled the world, so I know how Americans act. I believe me, I get it. See? That's just American, man. So, anyway, hey, last Shabbat, y'all learned a lot about fasting, right? Learn a lot about fasting. And listen, if you apply the principles that I'm teaching, which is nothing new, actually comes from the scriptures, just that when you, you know, the word is a living word. That means whatever we're living today, we have to apply it to the word that we read. And then that word, it comes off the pages because the living word, meaning the Messiah, he's in us, right? And that's what gives the strength to the word today. Are you following me? So it is a, if you apply those principles, you, you implement these and you do these, especially if you've discovered some things after living this life and you've done it and you realize that you are very successful in doing it and you can actually communicate to others and they can implement and do the same things and we can go forward. So one of the things that y'all should have definitely taken from that particular message last Sabbath was, is that we have got to get in the custom of joining fasting and prayer. That's one thing that the devil don't want to do. Get me wrong, you can still make your petition and your request made known before the Most High Yah through prayer, and he will still answer. But if you want to move mountains, if you want to destroy the demonic strongholds, if you want the oppressed go free, 
If you want to go after this kind, it's going to have to be coupled together with prayer and fasting. The whole idea is, is to get the inward man who's kind of weak and impotent right now because of the lack of fasting and prayer join in together is to get him strong. Yes, and so if the outward man is perishing, the inward man is renewed day by day. Now when we're already perishing every single one of us every day. We're getting older, we're going hastening to the grave. Are you following me? But the idea is why we we want to maximize each and every single day in the Messiah so we can be a benefit for his kingdom. And if we're benefit, then we can actually teach the people that are coming behind us how to be that same benefit. And so if we apply these and work and then we can go and teach them because that's the whole message that. Oh, it is. OK. It was your touch. Even though the light was on, it was a touch. So anyway, so if you implement these principles of living this, you're going to find out you're going to become more spiritually powerful. Now, Yah acknowledges his word, all right, Father, but he also acknowledges faith in action. Faith is not mental sin. We already know that, right? Faith is equated with right action. So if you say you have faith, but you don't have works, then your faith is what? It's dead, being alone. So right action, right faith, coupled with works in the Messiah has got to be joined together. So prayer and fasting, because we went over a couple of things too, right? But that's not what the message is going to be about today. But we're going to talk about something. We're going to talk about something else today. But we're going to try to refresh our memory and go over a few things. Then I'm going to introduce a couple of more new things in this particular message here today before we get to the actual message in itself. Because I couldn't finish it up last Shabbat, okay? Hallelujah. Okay, so I did say that I was going to... What happened? I, I, but I'm pointing. It ain't changed. I didn't change it right here? Okay, good. I need some better... And he said unto them, this kind cometh not forth but by what? Prayer and fasting. So there's a particular kind that can only come forth by prayer and fasting. So we find ourselves not successful in some serious deliverances because we're either missing one or the other. He coupled them together. The Messiah put them together. So if you want to be a powerful individual for the Most High, you're going to have to actually implement this. Hallelujah. Both on prayer and fasting. And uh, believe me, what I'd said last week, you're not going to find in the scriptures nowhere. It just comes by experience. To me, the fast begins when you're no longer, your body is no longer fighting you with hunger. Because if you're concentrating your efforts on having to deal with pains in the sides, headaches, knees weak, back hurting. Or if I'm, you're, you're off. Your concentration is off some. But once you, if you've done, went, if you, anybody's ever fasted long enough and you get into that um, part of your body to where your body no longer desires food, then you know you truly have a spiritual connection with the Most High because you're not distracted. Your flesh is not distracted. You're not distracted. And believe it or not, you'll get to the point sometimes that where you don't even desire food. And even after you break your fast, sometimes you don't even want to break it because, I mean, you're, you're, you're walking so close to Yah and he's hearing you. You can tell he's hearing you. And, 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 you know, this is another thing, too. We are accustomed to only asking one time, but we need to continue to keep making our requests and our petition before the Most High known throughout the fast. Remember the woman of importunity? She wore out the king, kept coming and kept coming. That's what the Father is saying. And just because you don't see your answer coming at the first time that you, or the outset that you've actually requested or made a request for the Most High, y'all don't mean he didn't hear you. You just have to keep on. We learned that from the prayer with Daniel, right? We learned that from the prayer with Daniel. I mean, these angels got to do a lot of fighting to get into this realm. And then once they deliver the message, they got to do a lot of fighting to get back out of the realm. We don't even see all this, but we have the luxury of being able to know, based on what is written, what is actually going on in the heavenlies. We learn a lot from Job. We learn a lot from Messiah. We learn a lot from Daniel. We learn a lot from all these people. But the idea is we have to put our center of attention and focus and immerse ourselves 
in the text in itself and not be going too fast like we're reading a Tom Clancy novel or something like that because we're going to be missing a lot. How many times do we hear messages on Sabbath and we find out, man, I've read over that two, three, four, five times and all of a sudden, bam, it jumps up out. The text does. You know why? Because faith come by. Hearing comes by. See, it's the faith that is operated. It's the faith that is actually that, that, is, that is happening that causes us to see the things that we've never been able to see. I mean, Paul was a doctor of the law, right? But he had scales on his eyes. He couldn't even see Messiah. But then once the scales came off his eyes, he was able to see. But what was accompanied Apostle Paul with that blindness? He was fasting. He was fasting and Ananias came and laid hands on him, prayed, made a petition for him. And then the scales fell off his eyes, called him Brother Saul because he was terrified of him. And then next thing you know, he comes and does his mighty work. Does his mighty work for y'all. All right. All right. So briefly, let's look into the scriptures and see how people believed in fasting. Remember, Israel, that if we're going to be powerful, we must always remember prayer and fasting works together. Now, let's go to Acts chapter 10. We want to go over some text right here to show how that the attention of our people back then, this is the way they commonly understood it. With us, we either, we're, I'm sure we're praying when we're fasting, but sometimes we get a lot distracted, right? You get distracted. And mind you, you don't have to have a, a room, a prayer room. I'm not saying don't have one, but you don't have to have a prayer room to actually pray. You could be driving and praying. You could be walking and praying. Are you following? You could be talking to the Father praying. As a matter of fact, the book says pray without prayer. So how do you do that? I mean, because you still have to continue on with daily tasks. So how do you pray without ceasing? That means you're immersing him constantly in your mind. Are you following? He's constantly in your mind. I would suggest that you know, I mean, you, you wouldn't have to deal with too many temptations and stuff if you did keep him at the forefront of your mind. If your eyes, your attention, you focus, you stayed up on him, um, man, the devil will have a little room then, wouldn't he? Come on, teach. Acts chapter 10, verse 30. You ain't there? You can't see it? Okay. And Cornelius said... Four days ago, I was fasting unto this hour. Notice, Cornelius said four days ago, he was fasting unto this hour, right? Four days ago. Now, mind you, this is an Italian. And they understood the principles about fasting. This man was a devout man. Is that right? One that feared Yah and always gave alms unto the Israelites, Yah's people. Is that right? He picked up that fasting was very important. Come on. And at the ninth hour. And at the what hour? Ninth. What, what happened? I prayed in my house. Notice, so now you can see that he's fasting and praying. And in the ninth hour, this is four days ago now, right? He's on a four-day fast. Come on. And behold, a man stood before me in bright clothing. Now look at this. The angel all of a sudden showed up. The angel all of a sudden showed up. Come on. And said, Cornelius, your prayer is heard. And your alms are had in remembrance in the sight of Yah. Isn't that beautiful? Y'all see that, right? He was fasting. It was four days. It wasn't one day. It wasn't two days. It wasn't three days. It was four days later, about the ninth hour, the messenger of the Most High Yah came to him and said, you know what? Your prayer is heard. They heard it from the time he prayed. Hallelujah. He didn't get the answer from the messenger until four days later Amen. at the ninth hour. So in other words, don't give up. What does the word teach us? Don't be weary and well doing for in due season you shall reap if you do what? Faint not. You see what I mean? So our attitude has got to change. One day with the Messiah is as what? A thousand years and a thousand years is as what? One day. So don't think you've done something when you've done something in one day. Is one day even considered a millisecond in the time of y'all? To you and us, I mean to me and you, you and I, it may seem like a long time, but in, in y'all's time and frame and counter, it ain't nothing. I mean, even when he answered this one four days later, how much is that in the time of Yah? Ta Yah is not wreck. He don't reckon time like we do. You understand what I mean? So we have to make sure that we're always on Yah's time. And let me show you what your flesh is always designed to do. If you ask for something, you don't get it in this instant microwave generation right then and there, then you all of a sudden you faint and you give up. But you're supposed to continue to keep striving. 
You're supposed to continue to keep believing. The whole purpose of the asking and continue to keep asking is not that you're doubting. It's that you're showing yourself that you actually believe. It's the very opposite of the way we've always thought it to be. Some people equate if you keep on asking, well, you don't believe, but that ain't what the book says. The book says you keep on asking. You keep on pressing. I mean, if you're going to press toward the mark of the prize, of the high cost. So if you if you press it, that means you're constantly under pressure. Is that right? You're putting pressure. There's some resistance in there, right? But if you stop pressing, there's no more resistance. Is that right? So prayer, prayer petitioning, persistence, it's honored in the most high y'all. He equates it as faith. Right acts of believing. Hallelujah. Now, there was at the assembly at Antioch certain prophets and teachers. And Barnabas and Simeon, which is called Niger, and Lucius the Cyrene and Manian, which had been bought up with Herod the Tatriarch and Saul. And they ministered unto the master and fast. Remember, we talked about that last week, right? They ministered. So think about this. Also, when you are setting yourself apart to afflict your soul through fasting, you actually are ministering to Yah. You're ministering to the Messiah, you know, because you're, you're expecting something. And that, that's why I ask us that we all, we're all ministers of the Most High. Yah, don't we want to minister to him? So we need to get into the, the mind frame uh, and the mindset of loving to speaking with the Most High. Yah. Now, if you're not accustomed to fasting, your flesh is going to, you got a little time to go through. Because your flesh is going to kick. It's going to fight. It's going to balk. But your spirit man is going to be happy. He sure will. And the Holy Spirit said, separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work whereunto I have called them. And when they had fasted and prayed, when they had fasted and they joined it together, right? And laid their hands on them. They sent them away. Now, y'all have to understand, when we're straight way, when we're straight way, everybody is engaged in the word in case you know. I don't know what y'all do with y'all perspective assemblies and stuff when y'all at Goshen or Praise Land and stuff. But we don't like people who, stay, who are actually sitting in the congregation acting like they're at the PGA Tour or the Augusta at the golf course. We like proactive people. You know, you be been knowledgeable. I like to know you are alive, if you understand. I mean, I, know, I like to, that's why I walk up and down, you know, the dials and stuff. I'm getting ready to implement. So if we're hitting the reset, that means I'm going to have to reinstitute old traditions, right? So somebody bring me a cup of water up here. Hey. <laughs> we got to be washed by the water and the word, don't we? So make sure somebody get a break a cup of water up here to make sure we're all engaged and we're happy. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to the king. Proactive. It'll actually make you happy too. You won't be so depressed. Hallelujah. Glory to you. Actually, think that man, I actually had a good time with Jesus this morning. Man, hallelujah. I can tell that when y'all on the other side of that camera, y'all like it. Looking like Church of Christ people. Seven day Adventist people. You know that's a dead church. You're not taking it personally, brother Steve. You did used to be an Adventist, right? Used to be. Used to be. You still got some residue on you? Steve is the last one got residue on him, boy. Okay. He done shared that stuff a long, long time ago, had it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Somebody give it up for brother Steve. <laughs> Uh-oh. So I went all the way back to there, huh? Okay. So they, they, uh, Prayed in their fast and they laid hands on them and they sent them their way. Acts chapter 14, verse 21 through 23. Read. And when they had preached the gospel. And when they had city, preached, ministered the message. Come on. And had taught many. They returned to Lystra and to Iconium and to Antioch. Confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith that we must through, we must, through much tribulation, enter into the kingdom of Yah. And when they had ordained them elders in every assembly. When they had ordained them elders in every assembly, come on. And had prayed. And had fasting, prayed and. Fasted. And had prayed and. Fasted. You know, usually before y'all come to the feast, y'all should have included a fast somewhere in there and be praying. Y'all do know that, right? Y'all should be coming spiritually ready. 
You know what I mean? A whole lot more we get done, though. You know what I mean? Really, the more we crucify this flesh and the spirit, man, is, is, is alive to y'all. I'm telling you, he's nigh unto them. Nigh unto them. Nigh unto them. Nigh unto them. You know, because the one thing we have a problem with is speaking the word. Let me digress here for a second. So, anybody ever feel heavy sometimes? Do you ever declare and speak to it? Or do you just sit there and be heavy? Do you actually try to change what's going on? I mean, do you? I mean, this you have to really truly be proactive in this. Because the one thing that we don't do as Israel is we don't speak enough. But I know who do speak a lot. The witches speak a lot. The warlocks speak a lot. The unbelievers speak a lot. The world throws out all type of arrows of accusations and slanders and, and everything. They do a lot of speaking. Matter of fact, they don't never stop speaking. Religious people speak all of a sudden. I guess we just have taken that defeatist mentality and stuff. You know, I'm just suffering for Jesus. That ain't suffering for Jesus when you're under attack of the enemy. Not in that aspect. Are you following me? It's when you're doing the work of, of Jesus and then you're suffering. Not just second back taking suffering. You need to be proactive because let me tell you something. If you ever noticed, everybody, we in a generation where everybody wants to be a prophet today. But have you ever read what the prophets went through? You sure you want to be a prophet? I ain't, that's why I keep telling you, I haven't seen a prophet in this generation. Because if you're going to be a prophet, you're going to go through hell. You're going to go through a lot of hell before you even see victory. You're going to be tested. You're going to be tried. One prophet had to eat dung. Another one just spent all his time in prison. Most of them got beheaded. Nobody, they was always dwelling alone. Nobody could be around them. And when they did come, they didn't come with great words of salutations. How you doing today? It's good to see you. They usually came with a word of judgment and nobody didn't want to hear it. The majority of the kings wanted to have them beaten, wanted to have them killed. Jezebel, man, if you didn't, if you did not uh, uh, conform to her, even Elijah took off and ran. And you know, Elijah's a great prophet. And we say, man, like hell, I ain't running from no woman. You wasn't back in the days of Elijah. Elijah even had to be strength. That's one powerful woman for her to be making Elijah to run. And ain't none of us Elijah. That's a powerful woman. Think about it. That's a serious spirit. That was a serious spirit controlling that woman. So people have an illusion what they believe and think that a man of y'all, a woman of, or a man of y'all is. Let me say it because a, a man of y'all, he goes through a lot of pain. A lot of it. A lot of it. A lot of lamenting. Looking at the condition of y'all's people. Everybody want to be Moses. But nobody want to go up to the mountain. Uh oh, y'all hearing it right? So everybody who act like they want to be really truly don't want to be, because you're gonna go through a lot of suffering if you're expecting anything great from y'all. Hallelujah! A lot of so prepare your heart for suffering so you can rejoice. Matthew chapter seven verses seven through eleven. Everybody, all right? Glory to the King. And greetings to each and every last one of you out there on, by way of the internet, the information highway. Glory to the king. Bless y'all at home, straightway. Glory to the king. All right, come on, read. Ask, and it shall be given you. Ask, and it shall be given to you. Now, you know what? You know what you can actually receive 100% of the time, and it will be given? Is when you ask anything that pertain to y'all's will. He is going to give you that because it's just like it's just like his word. It's just like when he said his word, he said he set the seas and, and set boundaries of them that it doesn't come past on his land right here. It's just like this earth that is sitting here oscillating on nothing. It's just like when he separated the day from the night. Are you following me? If you ask anything according to his will, according to his will, according to his will, man, he hears you. Oh, oh, some. Oh, oh, yeah, they, oh, yeah, yeah, that's a good, that's a good obedient church child right there because they know my will. They know my, oh, yeah, I, and you can have that. What we can't do is deceive ourselves asking, we thinking that we're asking something according to his will, but in our heart, 
is something that we want so we can consume it on our own lust. And then turn around and put Yah in it. Ask, you shall receive. Seek, and you shall find. Now, what is seeking? What is seeking? I'm sure you lost something before, right? And if you're going to look for it, what kind of looking do you do? You understand what I mean? If you lost something of value, do you give up seeking within five minutes? Two, three minutes? Sometimes you take the whole day looking for it, don't you? You see the type of seeking we need to be doing? Hmm? Seeking. Seeking you shall find. Come on. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. Now, the whole purpose of that knocking is, is that you're going to the door, you're knocking. But if you never get to the door, you don't ever knock, then how can it be open? You're not even making yourself known that you're even at the door if you don't knock. Anybody ever go to the house and say, hey, man, I'm coming over. I'll let you know when I get there. And then when you get there, the only thing you do is just stand at the door. All of a sudden, you go out the back of the house. You come around front and you see him sit there. And you go, brother, what are you doing? He said, I'm here. Why didn't you knock? I told you I was coming. Why didn't you knock? How are you expecting an answer? You're not even knocking. You're just showing up. Ain't that how we do? In Israel, I'm a child of the king. I'm here. You know what I have need of before I even ask. That's how spiritual he is. Isn't it? He know our thoughts, everything. And he still ain't answering nothing until you say something. Until you make yourself known. Come on. For everyone that asks, receives. And he that seeks, finds. And to him that knocks, it shall be open. Or what man is there of you? Whom if his son shall ask bread, will he give him a stone? Anybody ever did that? You wouldn't give your child a stone for a piece of bread, would you? Come on. Or, oh, if he ask a fish, will you give him a serpent? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father, which is in heaven, give you good things to them that ask him? You hear that? That do what? Yeah. Meaning make your request known. Are you following? So we have to ask we have to knock in order to receive. We can't just go around aimlessly. We have to put right action with our request. We have to become proactive when we're speaking to the Father. We can't just show up and assume we're a child of the kingdom. He's going to give us something when we're not even open up our mouth to even know what we want. And a lot of times the reason why the Father wants you to speak because he wants to make sure that you know what you're talking about. You ever ask for something and you had it in your mind that you was going to receive it and then when you got an answer it came the whole total opposite way? You know like we have all asked for patience. Did we? Father please give me some patience. I'm so irritated. I'm so irritated. I get in my feelings so damn fast. Please just give me some patience. And then the first thing you do is bring somebody in front of you to try your patience. And then what do you do? You go right back off again. And you know what? And you ain't going to never get what you're looking for until you pass the test. You'll never get it. Every time I see Brother Galen, he tests my patience. Just looking at him tests my patience, man. I I got to wonder if I got something going on inside of me, man. Dang. You've seen people, you just look at them, you just don't like them. But you got to love them because it's your brother. <laughs> no wonder he keep coming around. <laughs> but you see what's happening, right? We're trying to make sure we're keeping the principles of y'all intact. 
Hallelujah. Intact. Now, when do we need to fast? Well, when you're weak in any area of your life, you need to fast. If you're given over habitually to different temptations and addictions, you know you need to fast. Because you don't pray, but you haven't fast to break the band of wickedness. There's a strength in that. Hallelujah. When the assembly is not getting the results we need, corporately, we need to fast. That's how we know. Communities, homesteads, come on, man. We've been dealing with some of these same old long-standing issues and ain't nothing changing. We've been dealing with a brother and a sister who we love and they keep being repeat offenders of the same thing again and again and again. I know one thing, fast will help break that band of wickedness. It sure will. Prayer and fast will. Yeah, we do. I'm going to pray for you. So, you know, we, we love doing that, don't we? I'll pray for you, brother. See, let's just get real. If we're going to really pray, oh, good. Let's all of us set ourselves apart. And I tell you what, brother, I tell you what, sister, we've been dealing with this for a few years and you ain't getting no better. So you know what we're going to do? We all going to pray. We're going to stay in this room until you get, until you get delivered. Woo! That's called a labor of love. Uh-oh. So I said, well, I don't know if I love somebody that much now. <laughs> I don't know if I got time for all that. <laughs> in marriage, of uh, times of uncertainty or in confusion, that's how you know you need to fast. When you are expecting something from Yah, that's how you know you need to fast. In times of trouble and calamity, when problems are multiplied, that's how you know you need to fast. In other words, anytime something comes into your life that doesn't bring peace, you may all consider fasting and praying. May all consider that first. You know what I mean? Because wouldn't that be seek ye first the kingdom of Yah and his righteousness and then all these things will be added unto you. See, we got to get out all these things as a car, a house, and material stuff. We talking about things that's going to be eternal when moth and rust is not going to come and corrupt it. We talking about stuff that's going to stay with us. Are you following me? That's going to make us the Israelite that we need to be. When demonic forces are at work, when you are weak in any area of your life, that's how you know you need to fast. Y'all will not answer our prayers if strife, bitterness, oppression, people, oppressing people, etc. All this is going on. In Isaiah 58, we probably read this, I cannot tell you how many times, but we're going to read it again. And see what comes out of it. Hallelujah. We're going to read it again to see exactly what come out of it. Now, Brother David, he put limitations on me. He, he put a, a, a piece of dummy tape right here. And he put a piece of dummy tape over there. And then he, then he put a barrier to make sure that I don't go past his, that I don't get off camera. You understand what I mean? So, and then Michael Israel said, now we got some tape up here, Pastor. You can't go past this right here. And then over there, you can't go past that. So much liberty for freedom. Liberty and freedom, huh? In the Messiah, huh? So much for sitting my feet in open places. <laughs> Come on, teach read. Cry loud. Spare not. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Now let's stop here for a second. When you're crying aloud, is that just shouting? When you're crying aloud, there's an anguish of voice in your spirit. I keep trying to tell y'all this another secret of the kingdom right here. I'm trying to tell you I, it's because it's there's a natural way that people perceive and believe, but then there's the spiritual way in which Yah acknowledges. See, the things of Yah are foolishness unto this world. Are you following me? Simple. You get heavy. Put on a garment of praise. 
What does that mean? You just go and put on some sackcloth? Or you just go put on some nice fly garments? Put on a garment of praise? No, that means you clothe yourself with praise. That means, in other words, maybe you go somewhere and scream and shout and act like a madman while you praising y'all, looking crazy, going run around the backyard in trees, hollering and screaming, hallelujah, glory to the king. I hear you. You all I need. Praise you. If you're doing all that, that the flesh, the flesh looking at you, man, that's crazy. That's foolishness. When David was bringing in the commandments into the, into the kingdom, he danced all the way down to his fruit of looms. And getting down the whole time, looking like that he, he's having seizures. Because, you know, they didn't dance like we do today, man. They ain't got our moves today, man. Shoot, we got some moves. But he was moving around. I mean, think about that. Really getting down, I mean, and giving all that he had. And then he told that woman, he said, what I did, I did before y'all. And y'all never rebuked it. He never reproved it. He accepted it. I'm telling you, it's totally different. It's totally different what y'all accepts as opposed to what you have in your mind. So you got to stop being dignified. Most of you, how many of y'all feel with the Holy Spirit? Most of you know if you're going to get that Holy Spirit, you, you feel the quickening, right? But man, if you're going to bring that quickening up to the zenith, you know you got to move. Because that Holy Spirit will be like fire that is shut up in your bones. And the more you move, the greater the fire. The more you move, the greater the anointing. And the more you shout, the more yokes are being broken. You can feel the bands coming off of you. And when you get finished, you feel free. Now you can understand about standing in the liberty, in the Messiah. Anybody else see you? They'll say you're mad. There's something wrong with them folks. See, in the kingdom, there's something right with you, and there's something wrong with them. But it's got to be, see, that's what y'all's honors. But our dignified flesh. Oh, mm -mm. But when you was a heathen, you could go to the club and act stupid as hell. You could give it up for the flesh. You know I'm telling the truth. Or when your so-called song come on. And you at home in the living room or something. Thinking you just saying just as good as them. See, that's how we act though. So sometimes you get a chance, just try really truly praising and worshiping the Father in private. When ain't nobody around, just try it sometime. Hmm. Glory to the king. Glory. Read. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. So cry loud and spare not and lift up. Spare not meaning spare not meaning what? Don't hold back. Cry loud, spare not. Don't hold back. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. And then do what? And show my people their transgressions. That's what Isaiah was doing. Showing his people, y'all's people, the transgressions, right? But he had to cry loud, right? Come on. And the house of Jacob, their sins. Come on. Yet they seek me daily. Uh oh, hold on. This is what we're getting to. Yet they seek me daily. Ain't that what Israel do? Don't we seek him? Oh, I get it in the context of Isaiah crying against the sins and stuff. But we digressing all over the place here, okay? Hallelujah. Come on. And delight and delight to know my ways. So they seek me daily. At least they say they do. And they delight to know my ways, but look what's happening. As a nation that did righteousness uh -huh. and forsook not the ordinance of Elohim. Read. They ask of me the ordinances of justice. Y'all hear that? It seems like we're doing good, don't it? We're asking for the right thing, seeking for the right thing. It seems like it. 
I mean, look how the prophet is starting out, just like y'all does. In the book of Revelation, I'm in the book of Revelations. Oh, man, you're doing this. You're, you're doing this. You look good. You do good, but I have a few things against you. You're meeting all these conditions. You're meeting all these circumstances, but I have a few things against you. That's what we need to know. Come on. They take delight. They take delight. In approaching to Yah. Uh-huh. You see that? I mean, right now, everything looks good. The way the prophet is speaking. Come on. Wherefore have we fasted, say they, and you see not? Now, wait a minute. We fast and fall, but you don't even see it. What is going on? Yeah, we take delight coming into your presence. Yeah, we take delight in speaking to you. We sure do, but we're doing all this and you don't even see us. Come on. Wherefore have we afflicted our soul? Why did we afflict our soul and to what purpose and to what end is it? Come on. And you took no knowledge? And you didn't take no knowledge of us in doing this? Come on. I mean, that's what happens with us sometimes. That's what the place that we're in in this wicked generation. There's a lot of people in this generation that hey, I'm gonna say there's a quite a few people that do fasting and prayer. Yeah, they do. Yeah, not all of us. Are you following me? Watch this. Behold, in the days of your fast, you now, find here comes the answer. So, in the days of your afflicting of your soul, in the days of your fast, in all this religious order that you look like that you're doing, going through the motions, and you're thinking you're crossing every T and dotting every I and meeting all the conditions, behold, but in the day of your what? Fast. Fast what? You find pleasure. You find pleasure. How are you going to be fasting and then finding pleasure? Come on. And exact all your labors. And you exact all your labors. Come on. Behold, you fast for strife. And you debate. fast for strife. You're still full of contention. You're full of debate. But you're fasting. You're not asking to be delivered from this in your fast. You're not asking to be healed from this. Come on. And to smite with the fist of and wickedness. And you smite with the fist of wickedness. You're constantly putting forth the finger. In the midst of your fast. In the midst of your religious gatherings. Everything that you're doing. And you delight to seek me. Come in for my face. You fasting. But you forgot about the strife. You forgot about the smiting and putting forth of the finger. Come on. You shall not fast as you do this day to make your voice to be heard on high. Your fast ain't supposed to be for the intent to make sure that your voice is heard on high. Come on. Is this such a fast that I have chosen? I didn't chose this fast for you to come before me like this and you still full of unforgiveness. You still full of bitterness and hatred and division and strife and... But yet you're fasting in this condition. You're asking for all this and you want to fast for this, but you forget this. You coming before me dirty. You ain't even clean. Come on. A day for a man to afflict his soul? Is it to bow down his head as a bulrush and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? Boy, it sure does look good, don't it? Huh? We got this thing down, huh? Man, we wearing sackcloth, man. We go, whoo, we look really good. Come on. Will you call this a fast and an acceptable day to y'all? You gonna call this an acceptable day to y'all when they got all these indictments against you? Come on. Is not this the fast that I have chosen? Come on. To loose the bands of wickedness. This is the fast that I've chosen. To loose the band of wickedness, but yet you still come before me wicked. Come on. To undo the heavy burdens. To undo the heavy burdens. Come on. And to let the oppressed go free. And to let the oppressed go free. This is the fast that I have chosen right here. In other words, you want to fast? Start here. <laughs> because you know all this other, you know everything that, that he worked, that he said, this is the fast I've chosen. Read from there. To loose the band to of wickedness. To loose the band of wickedness. Come on. To undo the heavy burdens. To undo the heavy burdens. And to let the oppressed and go free. And to let free. the oppressed go free. You know, there's always there's something synonymous with every single one of them. You know what it is? All of them work by love. 
All the rest of it is you. Come on. And that you break every yoke. Break every yoke. Come on. Is it not to deal your bread to the hungry? Y'all hearing this? Come on. And that you bring the poor that are cast out to your house. When you see the naked that you cover him. And that you hide not yourself from your own flesh. Then shall your light break forth as the morning. Then shall your light break forth as what? Morning. As the morning. That's when you're going to get to see your breakthrough. When you, see, when you do all this the right way, the proper way. So when you fast and you set yourself to fast, make sure you got your spirit right. That you don't just start a fast and you're full of strife. Don't, don't set up and start a fast. You just got finished having contention with your brother. And you're full of envy. Don't set up and do no fast. And you know you got unforgiveness and bitterness inside of you. And you won't come before him real religious looking really good too. No, he didn't choose that fast. He chose this fast. He chose the fast that's going to really truly set the captives free. That's the fast that he chose. Come on. And your health shall spring forth speedily. Then your health will spring forth speedily. See, these things you ought to have done and not left the hunter undone. See, what Isaiah is doing is bringing clarity from the Father the, the way he sees us fasting and his expectations of us fasting and praying. Hallelujah. Read on. And your righteousness shall go before you. The glory of Yah shall be your rear reward. Isn't that beautiful? Keep going. Is that 12? Keep going. Then shall you call and Yah shall answer. Then shall you call and he will do what? Answer. Because you have a clear signal now. You don't have all this distraction, all this stuff that's weighing you down. He, he's, he wants to hear you now. Come on. You shall cry. And he shall say, here I am. Here I am. You will cry. And he's going to say, here I am. What, wouldn't it be nice one day if you out really truly crying out to the Father and you out there running around all over the place and then all of a sudden the angels of y'all show up? Hmm. That would be something, wouldn't it? Or all of a sudden you, you hear his voice. Woo-wee. Now remember, Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. See, the reason why we don't experience what they did over there in the first century is because we've gotten so far away. We've had a lot of religious institutions and especially like Catholicism and Christianity and spring up and brought us farther away from Yah instead of closer to Yah. Why do you think Yah has got us separated from this world? I just made a video before I came up here and I said, isn't this amazing? Now, when we were Christians and we were celebrating pagan holidays and we were celebrating these satanic holidays and we, we was uh, celebrating these fairy tales and all these lies, everybody in our family, everybody loved us. But as soon as we start obeying y'all, keeping his commandments, get filled with his Holy Spirit, actually doing what their word says. Now, the same people that we used to be able to celebrate so-called y'all will. Now they hate you. Now they're putting a finger on you. Now they're pointing you out. They're calling you all kind of names and everything. I'm like, what happened? Now, wait a minute. I've been where you are, but you ain't where I am. I know what you believe. I know what you do. I did the same things, and now I'm over here. Why are you condemning me? Now, because I'm keeping his commandments and doing that which is right in his eyes. What have I done to offend you? That's what they did with Elder Kabir up here. Man could have ran for president. He could have ran for governor of the state of Wisconsin and won if he wanted to. Politically connected, everything. Trumpy, <laughs> whole nine yards. He was, man, he could have did all that up here because of his football career and his name. And all it took was one line woman. I keep telling you, that's why I keep telling you in scripture that the scripture always warned a man about a woman. And the whole, this whole entire Green Bay area who knew his character, they knew he was a yah fearing man. 
They know that he was morally a good man. All of a sudden, he became evil. One accusation from a woman. They forgot the man that he was, all because of him keeping his commandment and his association with straightway. People talk about us left and right, but yet they can't lay no sins to our charge. A few years has passed. Only a few people have come back and said, I'm sorry. You're right. This is beautiful. Uh, but I ain't going to do it. Isn't that something? Come on, read on. If you take away from the midst of you the yoke, the putting forth of the finger. See what I mean? If you take it away from the midst, just take it out of the midst of you. The yoke and putting forth of the finger, meaning accusing. Come on. And speaking vanity. And stop speaking vanity. Come on. And if you draw out your soul to the hungry. Y'all hear that? Draw out your soul to the hungry. Come on. And satisfy the afflicted soul. Come on. Then shall your light rise in obscurity. Your light is going to rise out of the darkness, out of obscurity. Come on. And your darkness shall be as the noonday. And Yah shall guide you continually. And satisfy your soul in drought. And make fat your bones. And you shall be like a watered garden. A well watered garden. Isn't that something? Come on. And like a spring of water. Whose That's water if you just do what Yah says and do it his way. All of these promises. Is for you. He'll be there. But you can't have malice inside of you doing this. Basically what Isaiah is saying. From the father is. Get rid of the strife, get rid of the malice, get rid of the ill will, get all of that. So when you do fast, you fast and you pray the right way so you can be heard on high. So he can deliver you. You can break yokes, have your health spring forth expediently. You'll be like a well water garden. You'll be nourished. Even when obscurity is there, it's going to rise as the noonday sun. You'll have your answers. You'll have your deliverance. You'll have everything you need. Come on. And like a spring of water whose waters fail not. And they that shall be of you shall build the old waste places. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations. Y'all hear this? You're going to raise up the foundation of many generations. But how are you going to do that though? You got to get back to the old places. The old waste places. Come on. You shall be called. The repairers of the breach. The repairs of the breach. The restores of the path, right? The restores of paths to that dwell something? in. That means everything that has grown up over the years. Like what Christianity and everything has done done with us. Done took all of our ways, our heritage, our culture, our language, everything about it. It's done grown up with thorns and thistles the way you can't even see the paths no more. But you, when I get finished with you, say of God. You're going to be the repairs of the breach and the restores of the past. You're going to make sure that the path is clear so that everybody else will be able to walk in it as you walk in the light. Isn't this beautiful? I told you you was going to hear it today. You're going to hear it today. Hallelujah. Read on. We done? So today we're going to also talk about decree. A decree. What is a decree? It first starts with a word. A word. A declaration. Meaning you open up your mouth and saying something. That's what a decree is. A decree is a very strong utterance. Not just a weak utterance. It's a very strong utterance utterance have you ever prayed and shouted yes. your spirit is in so much anguish and stuff that you really are shouting to the father and you're really praying you're pouring out your soul I ain't, I ain't never known too many people like that though but mm, that's when you become desperate a decree is a very strong utterance who's back there doing it let's see how they doing is they doing it Oh, man, I ain't even up there. A decree is exercising power through the spoken 
word. Words. Words of command. Words of command. Command. You get that right? Next. Remember, some time ago, we spoke about the courts of heaven and how they operated. Y'all remember that? And we noticed that there's a courthouse up in heaven. A literal courthouse. Of course, they learned it all. You know, the people down here in this world, they learned everything they know from, from Torah, right? A decree is a religious ordinance enacted by a council. A decree is also like a judgment delivered in a probate court which confirms an order judicially. Uh, Yah expects for us to make decrees because he is a Yah of decrees himself. Did y'all you know what I said? Everything came into existence because Yah decreed it. Everything. The heavens, the angels, the sun, the moon, the stars, earth, light, all came into existence because y'all decreed it. So we, being the crown of his creation, Israel, his people, being the crown of his creation, he gave us a right to make declarations, to decree. We just don't do too much of it. Psalms 148, verse 2 and 3, and then skip to verse 6. Listen real close. Praise you him, all his angels. Praise you him, all his hosts. Praise you him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you stars of light. He has also established them forever and ever. He has made a decree which shall not pass. Y'all get that? As y'all's chosen people, we have the right to pass decrees. Our major problem is refusing to speak in, in knowledge and in truth. In knowledge and in truth. Do you know that when you come before the Father, before you make your request known, you need to know what you're talking about? You just can't be just going up there pouring out your little wicked heart. You need to actually spend some time. So you may need to write out what you want to say. Because he's very meticulous about words and the framing of words and how you form them and how you put them together. I told you, he wants you to make sure you know what you're talking about when you come before him. You need to be speaking in truth and in the knowledge of truth. See, Israel, we have a right to command powers to obey us and elements. I commanded the element, it obeyed. Sir, they commanded a tornado. It was coming right at us in straightway. Like a freight train coming right down. I mean, it was coming too. Went outside, rebuked it, went right back in there and laid down. I sure did. So I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Go that way. Sure did. Went up the hill and destroyed the Baptist church. It leveled that thing. It did. <laughs> Jesus has given us power and authority to command. But it's no good if you never exercise your right. See, a lot of times we have expectations of y'all, but we don't even know what all he has actually said at our feet. Come on, Pastor. As his children. So let's try to bring this home for a second. Let me see. We have a lot of people in here who have children, right? At different stages and different areas of their life, right? And you know how fond you are of your children. Is that right? And as a, as a father and mother, you want to give them, even if it's something that they ask for and it's not even really needed for them, because they're your child, you want to be able to give it, give it to them, right? As long as there's nothing that's going to harm them. That's how the father looks at us. He says it's the father a good pleasure to give you the kingdom. So where's the kingdom at? We don't view ourselves like that as actually his children. Our father, a child, son or daughter is 100% totally dependent upon the father. The one that provides. Who is our provider? So as his children, if we ask, he'll be more than happy to give it to us. Isn't that true? 
It's just that we don't ever ask that. We don't ever put a lot of a lot of attention into asking. Because we have learned to trust in ourselves. That brother up as with you, he don't trust in the Father. He trusts in straightway Goshen. You see what I mean? We say, he's all I need. And when you get an opportunity to make sure he's all you need, then you lean to the arm of flesh. See, if he's all you need, you'll make your request to the Father, and guess what? Then he'll bring somebody. I mean, when Elijah had to eat, knowing that Yah is his provider, he just commanded the ravens to go get some food and bring it to him. Uh-oh. Yeah, he did. We know that Yahshua was Yah in the flesh, right? So when he was out there preaching to the 5,000, he had five loaves and two fishes. Oh, we got plenty. Oh, we do? Yeah, just start giving it to the people. Just start giving it to them. You see what I mean? Wow, that's miraculous. Wow, that's wonderful. Wow. I'm telling you, I believe we're missing out on a lot just because the way our minds have been wired. I think that we need to, oh, I bet if I say this, boy, everybody going to do it too. So go home, get your printer, type it out, type the word expectation. Meaning you always expect it. What you believe y'all for, you expecting to receive. Either expectation or expect. Sometimes it's good for you to put stuff at the door so you can remind yourself. As you walk out the door, we read all these other signs of everything. Stop. Go. No entry. No guns allowed. All these other things, but we don't ever read the word in front of our eyes or have it before the frontlets of our eyes. Wherever we go. Probably be a good change, wouldn't it? Probably be a good change next going on. Uh-oh, how to get way down there? I got to watch what I'm doing, man. So Jesus has given us the right to power, or given us power and authority to command, but it's no good if we don't exercise the right. Proverbs 8, verse 15, and then verse 29. Listen real close. By me, kings reign, and princes decree justice. When he gave the seed, to the sea, his decree that the waters should not pass his commandment when he appointed the foundations of the earth. Yeah, you see, I, you know, I still am amazed at that, okay? Because I just got finished coming back from Mexico, right? And every single time that I'm, I don't care where I'm at, if, I, if I'm out at a beach, y'all don't ever see that waters over your head? You don't ever see that waters over your head. I stand right there. And I watch that wave come in, and I watch it go right back out. And I still look and see that water over my head. And I watch it come in and go back out. And, I, and every time I'm reminded, that's what Yah said. He said, it can't go past this. Because he said. Because remember, water has always been here. Y'all forgot that already? There's more water than there is earth. And that water, just because he said it, no matter where you are on this earth, it all has a decree. In case many of y'all didn't know it, this earth used to be just one landmass. There wasn't all these separate continents. All this stuff happened in the days of Peleg. It sure did. When that flood took place, after that, that's when everything started getting divided. All you got to do is just look at it, and it looks like a jigsaw puzzle. You look just like one jigsaw puzzle. Boy, man, whenever we get a hold of something along with Satan, we tap stuff, don't we? Because we, we get y'all's judgment upon us. Israel, when Yah is involved in any decree, no one can reverse it. 
In other words, if somebody is declaring something against you and they are of a lower subordinate power in nature, you being the Israel like the, the children of Yah, you, whenever you declare something, it can't be broken. But you can break their bands and you can reverse their decrees because Yah has given you this power. Israel, when it comes to spiritual warfare, we must be extremely militant against the enemy. Now, for those of us that do deliverance, right? Have you ever noticed that there is a, uh, an unseen power, meaning, uh, namely the Holy Spirit, that rises up inside of you when you're in deliverance and you can feel a connection that you're fighting against the forces of evil? You can literally feel it. That's the real you. That's the real you. A true Israelite does not fear any situation. God has given us the power to decree and declare. Job 22, 28. When you have it, go ahead and read. Everybody all right? Man, they're clocking them. How long we been? Because I don't want to be too long. Someone said, What? <laughs> what? <laughs> Go ahead and read. You shall also decree a thing, and it shall be established unto you. Now, hear this. Y'all want you to make declarations. You didn't know it, but he wants you to make declarations. He expects for you to call things that are not as though they were. He expects that. He expects for you to speak with power and authority and confidence. It's just that we don't know it because we don't do it. Maybe we taught it more and more. We'll continue to keep doing it, but he expects that. He expects for you to speak and decree over situations, circumstances. He expects that. How the hell are you going to be able to move heaven and earth if you won't open up your mouth? How do you think heaven and earth was created? Because God said. Oh, boy. I'm telling you, man, we're going to, we're going to break and loose. All these bands that are upon our spirits and on our mouths. We're going to unchain the chains that are on our voice. I'm telling you, Israel, there's a whole lot more available to us. I bet Satan them is laughing and saying, boy, if they only knew. How much I'm glad that they don't know what's available to them. Because if they did, they will give us hell. When you decree a thing or revoke an evil decree against your life, light will shine on your ways. When light comes in darkness, when light comes in darkness, and in darkness, it, when light comes in darkness, just, yeah, when light comes in darkness, darkness disappears. That's what I meant to say. If we could just comprehend the amount of power Yah has put at our disposal, a revelation. Yah knew whatever he declared, it would come into existence. Because he's Yah, right? The same Yah, Jesus, has given us power and authority. Do y'all not mark? Do y'all remember when y'all first came to the ministry? Y'all seen all these demons cast out and stuff? Y'all were scared as shitless. Now all of a sudden you are 100% immersed and involved in them and, and you'll be looking for demons that run and chase and cast out. See what y'all does because now you got a right mind? Everybody else is afraid. You happy. No matter how bad the forces of evil fight against you, never waver, nor doubt, you believe what you have said. The attitude we need to have is extreme is, is extremely boldness against Satan. No matter how long it takes for your words to come to manifest, do not give up. If you expect something from Yah, keep believing until it takes place, until it happens. Don't waver, don't doubt, don't second guess. Keep believing it. An example of boldness. 1 Kings 17, verse 1. At least I hope it is. I think it may be second. Read it real quick. Let's see what it is. And Elijah, the Tishbite, mm -hmm. who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, mm -hmm. said unto Ahab. What did he say? 
As Yahweh Elohim of Israel lives, before whom I stand, there shall be no dew, no rain these years, but according to my word. Y'all hear this? So, on Highway 52 in Lafayette, Tennessee, right? And some of you probably know, because if you ever rode with me, if you're brand new riding with me in my truck and we're going to Lowell's or Home Depot or something like that, I usually say, you see them trailers over there? So when we first moved there, they had these trailers. And I made them a reasonable offer. But something in my spirit kept telling me they wasn't going to sell them to me because I'm a black man. So you know what I did? But I walked to the door, and before I got out of the door, I turned around, I looked at them, and I said, because you won't sell these trailers to me, they will sit here and rot. You will never sell them. I'm going to take a picture of them too. How many people ever heard me tell this story before? Hmm? Didn't I have you in the truck the other day and told you that, Selena? I said, I said, them trucks been, I said, them trailers been sitting there rotting for 25 years. And they still there. I guarantee they've been still there. You Knows what I said. I was walking out the door and I said, huh, because you didn't want to sell these things to me, they're going to sit there and rot in place you'll never sell them. And they still sitting there. That's a decree. That's a declaration. Y'all honor my word and still honor it because right now they're dilapidated. Don't nobody want them. They keep on sitting there. They may decompose in that place because they in a mess right now. Nobody wants them things. Not even a chicken. I'll make sure I take a picture of them trailers, okay? What you, you do you remember how them trailers look, Selena? Did you see them? What do they look like? Trashy. <laughs> I used to tell everybody that. In other words, you just need to start making declarations. Especially against the heathen, too. If anybody's against your person as an Israelite, make a declaration. If they mean something evil for you, make a declaration. See if all y'all were honored. I'm telling you, I think we got a whole lot more at our disposal than what you think. And remember, there's a us and a them. Anytime you stand, anytime you make a stand for y'all, expect resistance and pushback. Things will not always go without trial, expectation, and tribulation. Expect tribulation. So Jeremiah 33 verses 1 through 3. Has anybody ever tried making declarations before? Did it work? How many tried and it didn't work? Keep trying. <laughs> You'll figure it out one day. Jeremiah 33, verse 1 through 3. Come on. Moreover, the word of Yah came unto Jeremiah the second time. Oh, now let's look at this. Jeremiah's in captivity in prison. Jeremiah is the spokesperson of Yah, the prophet of Yah. Jeremiah, what the people don't see, is Jeremiah's not praying no more. Jeremiah's just sitting there in the cell. Watch this, read. While he was yet shut up in the court of the prison, saying, Do it again, come from the beginning. Moreover, moreover, the word of Yah came, the more to, Jeremiah. Yah came to Jeremiah. The second time. The first time or the what? Second time. It came the what? Second time. The second time. Y'all see the reason why I go back over this time? Real, I, you know, when I'm, I'm telling y'all, when I'm studying the word, I can wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning. I could be reading the word. And I, I barely made it to four scriptures. Anybody ever been there before? You studying and you're reading one scripture next thing you know the Holy Spirit will lead you right here. Then you'll get back over here, you're meditating over here. Ah. Then you'll stop for a moment and pray, and then you'll go back to the scripture again. And before you know it, you look up. It's crazy how fast time goes when you're studying, though. You get set up there, man. I'm like I'm three o'clock, and you look up 5 30. Where did that go? Anybody ever been there before? 
I got to talk to the father about that when I get there. I'm like, because man, time be flying. And you could be sitting up there doing nothing. It takes forever. Anybody that watched the Super Bowl? How many people watched the Super Bowl? I watched the Super Bowl. They also was watching me too. It seemed like that game was forever. I go, I doze off sleep. Wake up, it's still first quarter. Go back, sleep again, wake up. Oh, okay. Oh. Sometimes his cow will wake me up. Some distract anyway. But that was a long game, wasn't it? That was a really long game. So why do them things seem to take so long? But when you sit up there studying y'all's word, it's just time go just like that. Read. While he was yet shut up in the court of the prison. So prayer. while Jeremiah was yet shut up in the court of the prisons. Thus says Yah, the maker thereof. The Elohim that formed it to establish. Yah is his name. Y'all hear that? This is thus says Yah. Yah is speaking, right? Come on. Call unto me. Call unto me. Now when he te he's telling them this, is this is the second time. He appeared on the second time he talked to him. Call unto me. And I will answer you. That means he come to him the second time. He didn't do nothing the first time. My question is, how many times y'all got to come to us? See, the prophets was human beings just like we are. They had humanity too. It did say this is the second time, right? He says, you call unto me and I will do what? Answer. I will answer. In other words, y'all, the same thing he's telling Jeremiah, he's telling us. You got to call unto him. Sometimes when you know you're guilty or you're oppressed, and then that's another thing that the, the flesh does, right? So we know that we're in the battle for our life and the battle for our souls, right? And sometimes we get so weary and heavy laden, we don't, we don't feel worthy to call on y'all. Isn't that right? We just rather just sit up and take our affliction and trial and stuff. But it ain't the way y'all want you to do it, though. He said, you drawn out of me. You see, and the devil got that whole trial and tribulation tailor-made for you to get away from him. Because you think, man, I'm just, I'm just so unclean. And I'll draw him out to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Y'all want you to be drawn closer to him when you don't feel like drawing closer to him. See, you got to get into what he says. Yeah, you feel dirty for a reason because you need the blood to make you clean. You can't sit up and say, I stink and then not go to the place to take a bath. I mean, usually if you stink, you can only take your own smell for so damn long. You say, I got to do something about this. So how long do you want to stink in the life of sin? Don't you want to be clean? <laughs> Read. Call unto me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things. Going to show you what? Great and mighty things. Great and mighty things. Come on. Which you knew not. Which you knew not. I remember when the last time I was down there in Texas, I was, uh, I forget what I was doing. I think I was buying, yeah, I was buying a vehicle. And I had uh, Elder Mitchell to contact Rob Webb. Rob Webb was out. I said, how you doing? He said, Pastor, I'm doing good. I said, hey, and Rob goes, he says, Pastor, who are we? He says, we couldn't have babies for a long time. And when you laid hands on us, now we got four. <laughs> he said, he says, uh, he says, I, 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 I think I'm done. Now, wait a minute. Which one is it? <laughs> hey, I, 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 you know, I got a son now. I had a daughter, daughter, daughter. I got a son. I, I, I'm good now. I'm like, what are you? I said, this man trying to tell me, Father, just, hey, you pray. So, Father, please stay. Stay. No more. <laughs> oh, Megan up there getting pricked. Pam, 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 pam. I said, well, brother, stop looking at your wife then. Can't do that, no, huh? <laughs> oh, boy, we are a special kind of people, ain't we? We're a special kind of people. Kabir ain't telling the father stop. <laughs> 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 
You finish. So Israel, if you do not start making decrees, you could die when it's not God's will. You think about this. Do you think that people are actually running around this earth without their mouth on you? What kind of world you living in? You Israel, you got enemies. And anytime that somebody says something negative against you, they're making a decree for Satan against you. You got to get that through your thick head. Whatever they can't do, they're invoking the forces of evil to do it for them. You need to start seeing spiritual Israel. The battle is not yours, but it is yours. But you got to know you on the battlefield. That's why the book always speaks in war terms. We're sitting there on this earth like ain't nothing going on. Then all of a sudden calamity comes in our life and we ain't done nothing. Where did it come from? Misery is in our life. For what? Where did it come from? Heaviness is in our life. Where did it come from? Somebody has got their mouth on you being an agent for Satan. So when are you going to start reversing the curse? I mean, Psalms 37 is there for a reason. Psalms 109 is there for a reason. David knew it was there for a reason. Uh-oh. You let negativity run against you. Don't let it run against you. I've always, I always have people after my soul. They are after my life. Not that I've done anything to them. Y'all ain't been to the internet lately and see how many people? Every once in a while, I'll go to the internet and see. Let me see how many new people done said something about it. People pop up all over the place. I'm like, who are these people? I said, if these people knew me, they probably would never talk like that. Because they don't know the intent. But what it is, is something about me they don't like. And I guess that gives them the right to go ahead and preach. Now, the Bible says preach the word, not preach Pastor Dow. Uh-oh. But the world hates me because of my stance for righteousness and truth. In all this I'm teaching today, it is summed up in open up your mouth and start speaking to situations and circumstances in your life. Stop being lifeless. You're full of life. Let me give us an example. Let's give us some examples of prayer for us to move forward in power. Y'all want some examples? Y'all sure? Father, in the name of Jesus, empower me to fast and pray with exception in Jesus' name. Meaning in expectation. I, I put exception because I probably didn't know how to spell ex expectation. Let me just go ahead and fall on the sword. <laughs> Ooh, I'm telling you, man, I have a lot of rides with myself sometimes. You don't, you don't ever have rides with yourself. I'm telling you, damn, you stupid. <laughs> I bind every single anti-fasting spirit in my life right now in the name of Jesus. You know just as well as I do that there's something spiritual going on in our flesh that don't want us to fast. And then all of a sudden these excuses come to our mind. If it's not an excuse, that's just something like a knowing just distracts us and don't want to do it. It's something wrong. It's something wrong. So guess what? You got to speak to the situation. That's how powerful our words is. Let me see the words created the heaven and the earth. The angels, the sun, the moons, and the stars. Hung it on nothing. That's what yeah, yeah, he did. Jesus says, speak to the mountain. Speak to the mountain. Beat out, remove, and cast over young. It'll happen. Don't go talk to a physical mountain like I did. I did. I thought it was going to literally move. Y'all heard my story about that, right? Good, I'm glad I ain't got to go over it then. Kind of embarrassing, but it's, hey, at least I had some faith. <laughs> I destroy every yoke of prayerlessness 
in my life. Every yoke of prayerlessness in my life. In other words, something is trying to keep me from praying. Some don't want me to pray. I break and loose your hold in Jesus' name. So when you can discern there's something, there's, look, there's something you want to do, but you don't do. You have a will that's inside of you that wants to do, but you keep finding yourself doing nothing or doing evil. And that's what Paul recognized over the book of Romans. I, I realize that there's something in me that is in my flesh. It's no good, uh, good thing. For to will is present with me. But how to do it, I find not. Who I shall thank my y'all through Jesus Christ. <laughs> Hallelujah, my Savior. You get that? So it's about applying his principles. I bind and break and destroy any power attacking my prayer and fasting life in Jesus' name. See what I'm doing? Anything is trying to hinder, you're going to speak. You want to declare. You want to say. You get it? Whatever you bound on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. So how do you bind and loose? Do you go buy a rope and bind and loose or you say it? I command confusion and frustration to be in the lives of those who speak evil against me in Jesus' name. All you're doing is returning this stuff back to the center, saying, I don't want this no more. Huh? But I'm going to tell you what, when we realize what we're doing, when we start speaking these words, man, we some faithful people at the post office. We're going to deliver shipping and handling. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I command every mountain in my life to be removed in Jesus' name. And if you know what the mountain is, speak to that mountain. Pastor, can it be that easy? Yeah. Because I can do all things through Messiah that strengthens me. He remember he said, without me you can do. That's why nothing ain't getting done. Every yoke of bondage and slavery, I break into pieces in Jesus' name. See what's happening? Declare. Making declarations, speaking to it. We don't think nothing can be done unless we put our physical hand to it. I break and loose myself from every demonic evil pattern and hold in Jesus' name. You're learning how to speak the right way. I command every garment of sorrow and hardship in my life catch fire and burn to ashes in Jesus' name. There's a lot going on, man. This is serious stuff. Any evil demonic flow into my life from evil altars, I dry up now in Jesus' name. I command all rooted problems in my life to be destroyed in Jesus' name. But we got a lot of talking to do, don't we? We got a lot of talking to do. We got a hell of a lot of talking to do. I don't know about you, but I got a lot of talking to do. I reverse every evil pronouncement ever issued against me in Jesus' name. All we do is give y'all some examples here. I'm trying to get this mic farther and farther away too. Any evil prophesied working in my life, I stop you now in Jesus' name. See, there's a whole nother realm that's going on that they, they understand this kind of language. If we could understand that realm more than this realm, we would really be something. Fire of y'all. Burn to ashes every demonic implantation in my life in Jesus' name. Blood of Jesus, purge me from my foundations in Jesus' name. Let every defiling dream in my life be terminated in Jesus' name. You know Satan be trying to attack you through your dreams too, right? They do. Every dream don't come from y'all. Psalm 37 verse 4 clearly says, You delight yourselves also in Yahweh, and he shall do what? Give you the desires of your heart. Delight. Delight. 
Delight. Delight. You get that? He'll give you desires of your heart. Commit your way unto Yahweh. Trust also in him. And he will bring it to pass. So, we're going to start speaking. We're going to start declaring. We're going to start taking authority over the things that's been trying to take authority over our lives. That's the whole purpose of this. It's to awaken our conscience. Making declarations and remembering that everything we do, we're doing it not by legalese, we're doing it by the law. The law of y'all because it's right. Are you following me? So, anytime you think you're normal, act mad, you'll be normal. <laughs> Anybody get that? Anytime you're normal, act mad, now you'll be normal. You'll be normal in the kingdom. Anything is going normal here in this world right here, you know, it's the polar opposite of y'all. Some people, sometimes they think I'm talking to somebody. If I'm at the airport or something, I, I know I can see people looking at me. They think I'm talking to somebody. Every once in a while I entertain them, I go. <laughs> then I go back talking to them. Hey, you got to have fun in life too, man. You can't just sit up there. Huh? You got to have, come on, everything. I know we got a bunch of war going on, man. It can't be fun. I think it's pretty damn fun killing the enemy. See, as warriors, man, there should come a time you should get mad when you ain't getting no victories. I'm serious. You should get mad as hell. You ain't get no victories. You gonna let him kill more than you? You gonna let him have a higher demonic count than you? You see what I'm talking about? You gotta have that tenacity, man. Listen, the book says we're gonna end with this. The weapons of our warfare. They are not cardinal. As you suppose. But to the pulling down of there's a lot of strongholds. First thing we got to do is cast down imaginations and every thought that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bring in the captivity in the captivity. You got to catch it first though, right? Into the obedience into the obedience of the Messiah. And hey, our greatest weapon on this earth is our tongue. That's why the Most High Yah gives you the ability to speak in tongues. It's your tongue. Hallelujah. He wants you to do less speaking with your mouth and more discerning with your eyes and your ears. That's why you got one mouth, two eyes, and two ears. You got two ears so you can hear on both sides. Two eyes so you can see doubly. One mouth so you can shut up and only speak when you need to. <laughs> Uh oh, not the other way around. All his mouth to keep talking, ain't saying nothing. Glory to the king. So, when fasting, make sure that you try it out. Prayer and fasting. See what happens when you get to that point where it may take you two days, may take you three days for the hunger to subside. And see if, see if what I'm saying is so. Send me a praise report or something like that after that. Hallelujah. Also, a good time to do some dancing and praising too while you fast. Because your flesh ain't going to feel like so. It's the best time to do it. Hallelujah. And then when you come off that fast, you don't even gonna believe how powerful you are. You're going to be you're gonna be walking around like this. Um, <clears throat> that's my issues over there. I'll tell you. I'll be standing in the living room or something. All of a sudden, the Holy Spirit, it, it hits hard, don't it? They're like, what the? I mean, it's hard. The Holy Spirit hit me hard. You know, the good hitting. You know, even I can manufacture it right now, but I mean, it, bam! It, everybody takes no. Stuff. Sometimes he hit like that, I gotta go.
I tell you one damn thing, ain't no way in the hell this flesh can take you out of prison 100% of the time. Oh, ooh, wee, that was a good one right there. <laughs> I remember uh, my son Chuck asked time ago, Daddy, what is going on? I said, who knows? Y'all probably taking some wickedness out of my ass. I don't know. It could be something. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right, so everybody good to go on something? But seek ye first the kingdom of Yah and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. In other words, his kingdom has to be the focus of your life. Always has to be the focus of your life. First thought when you wake up in the morning, last thought when you go to bed. It should constantly be in your mind. The kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of heaven. And his righteousness. And then all these things, all these desires will be fulfilled. Glory to the king. Let's give y'all a hand. Praise is real. Ain't y'all good. Glory, glory, glory. All right, so what time? What time is it? What's up to y'all? Oh, okay, go ahead. That time set up. Glory to the king. All right, hope y'all enjoy the word. Hope y'all let these saints sink deep down in your heart. Bring about a performance right now. Hallelujah. Let's, let's pray. Let the words of my mouth, the meditation of our heart, be acceptable in our sight. Oh, y'all. My strength and my redeemer, dismissing the magnificent, beautiful name of Yahshua the Hamashiach, Jesus the Messiah, in the precious name of the King of Glory, Almighty Yahweh, Shabbat Shalom. The King is coming. Uh oh, look at him looking. 